Imagine standing on the edge of a world frozen in time, a place so cold even water turns to stone. And yet beneath that stillness, this world tells a story of violent upheaval, cosmic collisions, and impossible survival. This is Tethys, an icy moon of Saturn that by all logic should have been shattered to pieces millions of years ago. But it wasn't. What saved it? what nearly destroyed it, and why are scientists still puzzled by the strange heat map that made them nickname this moon after a 1980s video game character? Stay with us, because what NASA's Cassini spacecraft found on the surface of Tethys stunned everyone. And what it revealed might just change how we look at the frozen frontiers of our solar system. This is the untold story of Saturn's scarred survivor, Tethys. Let's start with the basics. Tethys is one of Saturn's many moons, but not just any moon. It's the fifth largest in Saturn's system and orbits the ringed planet at a distance of about 295,000 kilometers. First discovered in 1684 by the Italian-French astronomer Giovanni Domenico Cassini, this moon was originally named as part of the Stars of Louis in honor of King Louis XIV. But centuries later, it, it would receive a more fitting name, Tethys, after a sea goddess and titaness from Greek mythology. Why the sea reference? Because this entire moon is practically made of frozen water. Thanks to Cassini, the spacecraft this time, not the man we know, that Tethys is composed almost entirely of water, ice with only trace amounts of rock. Its density is just 0.97 grams per cubic centimeter. That's less than the density of liquid water, meaning it would float if dropped into a giant ocean. In fact, Tethys is so light and so icy that it never fully differentiated like Earth did. There's no clear rocky core, no distinct layers. Instead, it's just a loosely compacted porous body of ancient frozen material. But don't let its delicate makeup fool you. Tethys has taken a beating and lived to tell the tale. Take Ithaca Chasma, for example. This isn't just any canyon, it's one of the largest chasms in the solar system, stretching nearly 2,000 kilometers long, 100 kilometers wide, and plunging five kilometers deep, it wraps around three quarters of Tethys's circumference. To understand the scale, imagine a crack starting in New York and ending in Denver. Now shrink that down onto a moon that's only a third the size of Earth's moon. Proportionally, it's absolutely monstrous. So what caused it? The prevailing theory is this, Tethys might have once had a liquid or semi-liquid interior. As it cooled, the water inside began to freeze. And unlike most substances, water expands when it freezes. As the interior solidified, the entire moon began to swell like an overfilled balloon. The rigid icy crust couldn't handle the pressure and began to split open. Ithaca Chasma is the resulting stretch mark from that catastrophic expansion. Scientists estimate that the moon swelled by up to 5% in volume. That may not sound like much, but on a planetary scale, that's massive. You've probably seen what happens when water pipes freeze and burst in the winter. It's the same physics only on a global scale. Ice expands pressure, builds, and eventually something gives. Only in Tethys's case, what gave was its own skin. If Ithaca Chasma was a wound from the inside out, Odysseus Crater is the opposite. It's the result of something slamming into Tethys from space. Odysseus is enormous. At 450 kilometers across, it spans nearly half the moon's diameter. Just think about that, an impact so violent that it should have shattered the entire moon. But it didn't, why? Because at the time of the impact, somewhere between 400 million and 1 billion years ago, Tethys wasn't fully solid. Its interior was still partially slushy or molten, which acted like a cushion. That cushioning effect likely absorbed the shock and saved the moon from becoming rubble. Picture slamming a hammer into a snow globe. 
If the water is liquid, the force disperses. If it's frozen solid, it cracks. Tethys was somewhere in between soft enough to bend but not break. Today, Odysseus doesn't look like a fresh crater. Its rim is worn down, its central peak collapsed, and its depth is surprisingly shallow. Why scientists believe in a process called viscous relaxation? Over millions of years, even ice behaves like a thick fluid. Given enough time, the weight of the surrounding material causes the crater to slump and smooth out. It's gravity at work slowly pulling Tethys back into shape. In 2012, something weird showed up on Cassini's infrared scans of Tethys. The moon's leading hemisphere, the side that faces forward in its orbit, wasn't behaving thermally like the rest. During the day, it was cooler. At night, it was warmer. This strange heat signature made the moon look like Pac-Man. Yes, really. The shape was so clear, scientists started calling it the Pac-Man anomaly. But it wasn't just a joke. The anomaly hinted at something strange about the surface. It turns out that this area has higher thermal inertia, meaning it retains and releases heat differently than the surrounding ice. Why? The culprit might be Saturn's E-ring specifically, particles blasted into space by geysers on the moon in Cilipelidus. These fine icy particles hit the leading side of Tethys like a constant sandblasting. They rough up the surface, depositing fresh small-grained ice. Smaller ice grains reflect more light and trap less heat, which is why that region stays cooler during the day and warmer at night. It's like the difference between smooth marble and fuzzy fleece. Meanwhile, the trailing hemisphere constantly bombarded by radiation gets darker, redder, and older. Tethys may not have active volcanoes like Enceladus or an atmosphere like Titan, but it tells a different story, a tale of survival through chaos. Unlike some other moons, it doesn't need to shout to be heard. Its surface speaks through scars and cracks, through quiet thermal quirks and softened craters. It's a world shaped by both internal change and external violence. Tethys is more than just an icy ball floating around Saturn. It's a geological time capsule. It shows us what happens when a world nearly tears itself apart and then keeps going. From swelling and cracking under its own freeze to surviving a moon-shattering collision to getting thermal graffiti from Saturn's E-ring, Tethys is proof that even small worlds can have big stories. There's a lesson in Tethys. That fragility doesn't mean weakness that even something soft and frozen can endure firestorms of impact and time, that survival isn't always about strength, it's about adapting to the environment, riding out the chaos, and evolving quietly in the shadows. We may never send another probe to Tethys in our lifetime, but its story carved in ice and written in scars is already speaking to us. The question is, are we listening Thanks for watching. If this journey through Tethys intrigued you, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more cosmic mysteries just like this one. Until next time, keep looking up, because sometimes the quietest moons have the loudest stories to tell.